Hey guys, Mike Toy Bonsai Boise. So I've been meaning to do a part two of my spring update and show you the other half of my trees that I didn't get to show you on the last video. Um, so I want to give you a little disclosure on how this is going to look though. So this is not going to be a smooth flowing video where we take a leisurely stroll through and look at all the trees one by one. This is going to be more like a hodgepodge of clips and different highlights of trees that I've taken throughout the past, I don't know, three or four weeks. Um, because, you know, springtime is a busy time and sometimes I just had a moment to work on a tree real quick. I didn't have time to set up the camera, so I did my best to kind of at least get the highlights of a before and after. And But, you know, it's going to be kind of a collage of different video clips. So um, I don't know what this format is going to look like when it's done. So bear with me. I might like it better. I might not like it. I don't know. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. Um, but they probably won't all go this way. Also, I'm going to show you my new bonsai uh, tables that I just picked up from a retail store that didn't want them anymore. So I'll give you a look at that. So follow me. Pretty ugly, right? Stuff everywhere. It just looks like a giant mess. So that's a little better. Still not perfect, but much, much better than before. So come with me and let's take a look. Okay, so here's a look at the new uh, bonsai benches that I got. I said there's a retail store around here that uh, didn't need them anymore and um, it was my good fortune to get them so it's kind of nice these little ones they just fit right under the big ones so I can pull them out and do my work on those if I want I'm probably gonna put some of these other tubs like the ones full of pots and ones full of bonsai soil I'll probably just stick them in there so it's a nice little setup and it looks a lot better than that old junky setup that I was using <laughs> you know those those things there so i will say i'm in the middle of spring cleaning so please don't judge my mess but here's where i got a bunch of cuttings and whatnot and I still got to get rid of that's all the dirt from trees that fell over over the winter and yeah so anyways it's a work in progress so let me give you a quick look here at some of these trees all right so here's my fun little juniper that i've had for about Let's see, about four years now. It was my first juniper I ever got. Um, it's a little shaggy. It was shaggier, but I just gave it a little trim. I didn't take it down to have a super clean look because I want it to thicken up a little more. So I, I left more foliage on it this time. I'm kind of, I'm letting it stay shaggy, shaggier this year. But here's just a quick look at it. All right, and here's my weird little silver maple, one of many silver maples that I have. I don't even know why I mess with this one. <laughs> it just didn't turn out the way I wanted. So when this was just barely a sapling that popped up, I tied it in a knot right there. And I wanted it to have a little loop-de-loop, -loop, like kind of like my other one did, but it didn't really do that. What happened is over time, that knot just sort of like got tighter and then it turned into an actual knot. So in other words, it first looked like a pretzel, but then it changed from a pretzel to just a tight knot that you can't untie. Not at all the kind of feature you'd want, but hey. Um, so, kind of trying to figure out what to do with it here. I don't know if I want to cut it, you know, a little or a lot. I'm thinking I'm going to cut right there. Um, but I may also go a little more drastic. I, you know, I can't really decide what to do with this, but it's been in the same soil for about three or four years now, so it really needs to be repotted. I know it's gotta be root bound. Um, so I may take it way down or I may not. I, I can't decide. I, I think I'm gonna make it a game time decision. So um, anyway, that's a look at it here. I'll show you what the roots look like. So I got drastic with it, <laughs> as you can see. Take a look at this, uh, pretty root bound. See those imprints? You can see the roots have circled around and around and around the pot. And 
It's got the perfect imprint from the training pot that it was in. Put all this carnage aside here. See those dips in there and how it's shaped? Yeah, <laughs> that's how you know it's root bound. So that's a look at the silver maple. Um, this is it once I got it all repotted and put in its new pot. I'm thinking I might just default to like a windswept look. The thing I like about the windswept, if I can say it, windswept look is that even if you decide not to stick with it long term, it's got such movement from training it that way that it just gives you a lot of options later. It's not just a stick in a pot going straight up, even though it's super skinny still. Um, it's got cool movement, so it gives you some options and different ways you can go with it later. It gives it some character and makes it more interesting. This tree is about seven or eight years old, somewhere in there. So it's been in a training pot pretty much the whole time. So um, that's why it's still so skinny. You can see the little bud right there. So that's where I'm hoping it's gonna grow out of. So yeah, that's a look at it there. Not really much else to say about it. Um, just another silver maple that I got drastic with, so. There it is, let's look at another. Time to give this guy a trim. Structurally speaking, it's, you know, needs a trim. Otherwise, it's doing really good. I like the little movement and curvature in the trunk. March 18th, 2021. Kept this in the garage over the winter and uh, as a result it leafed out early. <laughs> Same thing I did last year. So one thing I'll point out here, first thing I usually do is I just go through and I look for any dieback branches I got there. I need to get rid of those. Here's some little nubs. Sorry, I'm trying to both record and trim at the same time and not cut off the wrong branch or my finger or whatever. Anyway, so I go through and do that. And then once I've more or less got all the, I'm gonna call them dead ends clipped and there's a lot of them, then I gotta make some decisions. Right now I, oh, uh, Sorry, dog's neighbors decided to fight just now. <laughs> or dog's neighbors, oh my God. Neighbors, dogs. Anyway, I gotta figure out from there which of these branches to keep, which to lose. I mean, it's not structurally correct at all. It just sort of went this way. I've let it grow wild for the most part. You know, I'll trim it up and slip pot it into a bigger pot and that kind of thing, but I've never really given it much guidance on structure so um, in fact this scar here at one point until about two years ago it was actually a twin trunk sort of it came up through here and then the other half came out so it was actually you know you had a second half of the trunk coming up this way and then it fell off the bench one night didn't hear it happen or anything I just saw it the next morning and that piece had broken off so this is what's left and I like it now. I like I actually like it better now. Long story short, you can see up it's got a lot of great movement. And then once you get up here, it starts to get long and straight. And so I'm gonna have to make some big decisions here. So I'm gonna think about that and I'll be back and show you what to do. Alright, sorry about the wind here, I'll say, but um finished trimming this up the other day. Um didn't get a chance to film the result, but it looks a little more neat and tidy now. Honestly, I wanted to take it back a little bit further on the top just because of how long and straight some of these are, but uh, you know, I had to maintain the character of it. So I left it for now. I'll attack some of those later, or maybe I'll attack it in sections. I don't know. But I cleaned up all the dieback branches and the nubs and trimmed it back into shape and so now it's looking halfway respectable again there it is 
All right, here is my Philadelphus. I forget the entire name of it, but I know it's Philadelphus. Excuse the mess of wires in the background and me watching uh, Yellowstone in the background. Pretty cool show. They'll turn your back on a bear, that's when they get you. Anyways, back to the Philadelphus. So I, I bought this from a nursery about three years ago and I've really not done much to it other than just water it and give it fertilizer once in a while. But it's got cool bark and it's got white flowers. I think I've heard them called um, mock orange is a, another name for it. But I decided to air layer it. So as you can see, did a little air layer right here. And I'm also trying something different on that. So uh, I think I was messing with the flash there. <laughs> So I'm trying, instead of sphagnum moss, because if you watch any videos on how to air layer, it's always sphagnum moss. I say use sphagnum moss, and, and this works for me. This time I'm using, um, oh, what is it? It's like compressed coconut shavings. Um, I'll give you a look at it here in a second. So I'm heard that, uh, I've heard that it works, so I figure I'll give it a try, and we'll see. And, be a fun little experiment. I'm also going to take a lot of cuttings from this to see if they, they root. So a fun fact is that these Philadelphus are sort of half vine, half shrub. Here's a look at the coconut. I forget what it's called. Um, anyways, it's kind of dirty and gross looking, but um, <laughs> also I was just throwing cuttings in there as I went along. I just sort of jump into these projects sometimes. But yeah, that, that's what it is right there. So we'll see if it works. Here's the final look at it. So that air layered right above that center branch. And yeah, like I said, it, it's a fun little plant. Um, I don't know whether to call it a shrub or a tree or a vine, but whatever it is, I think it's got great potential. Um, I've, I've seen some and they look like vines. I've seen others that look like trees and others that look like shrubs. So. I'm going to go in the style of a tree on this. But yeah, that's a look at it there. So I'll, I'll keep you updated and let you know how the air layer goes on it and how the cuttings go. And we'll see if any of them work and if so, which ones and we'll go from there. All right, here is my Virginia creeper. I have two Virginia creepers. I did a full video on my other one. I've never done a video on this one. Now, shame on me, but this soil that it's in, <laughs> it's not even bonsai soil. I dug this out of the ground about four years ago and just stuck it in a pot when I was moving. And it has remained in that same pot this entire time. So that's just regular earth that it's in. Probably pretty nasty. Yeah, it's gonna be a dirty job. And a Virginia creeper, while it's considered invasive in some places and you know, just kind of a vine. Some might even call it a weed in some ways. I think that they are cool. Um, they've got great color, kind of all year round, especially in the fall though. I want it to fan out from the top here. So it's not, I'm not gonna go in much of a tree style. I'm gonna go in a vine style on this, maybe even like a cascading look. But it's got cool, kind of rough looking bark. It's got very colorful leaves that, um, it's got berries, it grows these little berries, which I already cut them off so you can't see them here. But yeah, I've, I like it. Here's what the roots look like. Kind of gnarly, look at these big nubs, which I was gonna get rid of these nubs, kind of right where my palm is. I'm kind of covering it up, see that? But I decided to keep it, I like it. I like this gnarly look that it's got. So yeah, that's, that's a look at the roots of a Virginia creeper. If you've never seen what they look like, that's what they look like. Kind of wiry looking, scraggly, you know, kind of like a vine, kind of like what it looks like. <laughs> but anyways, um, didn't get too nutso with it this time. I trimmed up the roots pretty good, got all that old nasty soil off, and that was a dirty job, let me tell you. And got it in this pot right here. I thought it was a fitting pot for it just kind of subtle and black and not very flashy and I think that once the Virginia creeper puts on some leaves and berries again the colors are going to contrast that black pot really well and I'll give you 
give you a close up here at how that root base looks because I tried to expose a lot of it this time around because I thought it looked cool. You know, this isn't meant to be a neat, pristine looking tree, you know, that you would see uh, well manicured in someone's garden. This is just like, you know, an old vine kind of <laughs> gnarly, probably growing on the back of a barn somewhere for a hundred years, you know, unattended to. That's kind of the the look that I'm going for on this one. So anyways, that's a look here at my other Virginia creeper. Check out my other video if you haven't seen what my other one looks like. Um, I think the other one was a cutting of this. I think this was, I'll call it the mother plant, where the other one came from. All right, this is a dwarf Korean lilac. Um, it's really not much to look at. It's really small and young. It was just a cutting at one point, but I decided to take it out of here and put it in a bonsai pot, which I'll show you here in one second. Well, there it is. <laughs> so let me give you a quick look here at some of these trees. Um, I know a moment ago I showed you little clips of me working on some of them, and uh, I'll show you kind of the, I don't want to say the end result, but the current uh, result. So let's we'll start down here. So this is that. Oops, let me see if I can do this. Philadelphus. Um, never really did a video on this before. It's in development, obviously. It's small and kind of goofy looking, and you know, bandaged up. But the goal here is I'm trying to air layer the top of it, and the way that I'm doing that is with. Um, coconut fibers so I'm not using sphagnum moss on this one so fun little experiment we'll see if it, if it works or not I don't know but so far so good but I, ha I will also say that in the past when I've air layered different trees that's normal you'll see that and then it can still die off so I'm not holding my breath but um, this little Philadelphus or I've heard it called all kinds of things um, mock orange i think is another name for it they look they look cool when they're all flowered out and stuff so i do see some little buds there that. Uh, let me see if flash will help here Maybe a little anyway so it's it's coming along so i've done a million videos on chaflera clumps here's one of them it's pretty overgrown and wild right now so I'm going to trim it down soon, but not yet. But um, yeah, this one I did, I think about a year ago. I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> I've done so many videos, so sorry. I think it was, I think it's titled Schaeffler Clump 3.0 or something like that. Can't remember. This is the Ginseng Ficus that I did a video on a year or two ago. It's doing great. Um, in fact, it's always done great. It's a, it's a little champ. I did repot it just recently, put it back in that same pot because I just like the way it looked in that pot. Sorry for the noise. It's um, about seven o'clock here, so on a Sunday night. And I guess that's busy time. Anyway, so that's the ginseng ficus. I did find out with some more research because somebody commented that they didn't think that was a ginseng ficus. So after some research, we determined that it's half ginseng ficus on the bottom and the top is something else. Uh, what is it? Green Island ficus. So it was grafted on there at some point, which is kind of common, I guess, for these store-bought ginseng ficuses. Um, they're actually grafted with a Green Island ficus. I think that's the term. Sorry, I'll, I'll double check that and I'll put it in the text up top here if I'm wrong. This is a tiger bark ficus that I've done a, a few videos on. That's an update. So it looks really bare right now. So what can I say? Um, it's doing great. It was doing great. And then 
I actually just did this while I was on the phone. I think I was just talking to somebody on the phone and I was looking at it and I was going, you know, structurally speaking, it, it's just, I didn't like the way it was going. I thought I'm going to do some hard cuts to it and take it back kind of drastically just to get it aligned with what I have envisioned for it. So that's why it looks a little leggy and dorky right now. I'm still not completely happy with it, but I do love it as a tree and I think it's got great potential. And so we're going to keep on keeping on with that one. All right, here is a dwarf Alberta spruce. I really haven't done anything with it since the last video that I made. But, sorry, the lighting kind of sucks out here. Sometimes, all the time, basically. Um, so I haven't really done anything with it since I made the last video where I made some cuts and rewired it and stuff. So, But it did, you know, it survived. And honestly, this thing has been a champ ever since I've had it. Um, lots of varying opinions on this since I made the last video. Ranging from don't do big cuts to those things are tough as nails. And so I've heard all kinds of different opinions. And I guess in my experience, I will say that it's tough and it can handle a lot but it doesn't necessarily thrive in all conditions so i don't think i would do any more pruning to this in fact i'm not going to do any pruning to this for a long time but in the future also i'm not going to do it in the fall or winter i'm going to do it in the spring like other trees i've heard with these you can do them any time of year and i guess you can but hope this is making some kind of sense i guess what i'm saying is it didn't exactly thrive after I did it last fall. So in the future, I'm going to do it in the spring. This is a fun one. Did this recently. This is a uh, dwarf Korean lilac. This was just a cutting from another larger dwarf Korean lilac that I did a video on. Just had it in a little, you know, cuttings pot for a couple of years, really. And this time I decided I'm just going to pot it up in a bonsai pot and... Let it begin. This is a my dwarf pomegranate. It got a little, um, I'm gonna call it dry and pouty. It started pouting and I guess I've waited too long to water it. I, when they're inside, I don't water them as often to avoid root rot. And this is a Mediterranean tree, so it takes a little less water than the ficus and some of these others so but i guess i waited too long um it, it didn't die or anything it just got a little wilty and so watered it up took it out from under the grow lights and put it in the shade for a couple days and it bounced right back as you can see here by the way i will say this is late march i think it's the 28th if i'm not mistaken um it's too early to leave these tropical trees and um, even the pomegranate tree outside overnight. Today it was a high of 75. Um, I'm going to bring a few of these back in tonight, so just for what it's worth. This is a Siberian elm. Started as a cutting a few years ago. And I think I posted just a little thing about this on, on a video. In fact, it was a video that I did for this one, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways... I experimented th this winter by letting it stay inside under grow lights. I wanted to see, is this like the Chinese elm that can grow indoors? And turns out it is. Now, how many years in a row you can do that, I don't know. But at least one. But I'll also say, there, it's. Um, I've got other Siberian elms that were outside all year, and they have not leafed out like this. They're just starting to. This one's leafed out a lot, and it's a little more like dainty they're kind of not as tough as the other ones that stay outside for obvious reasons this is a chiflera this was my first chiflera that i ever had that's in this kind of ugly training pot right now but the tree itself has some great movement and structure and character and i i really like it not only is it my first one it's also my favorite one even the, the root base is just cool and just let's see if I can set it down and get you a better look here. It 
almost gives the impression of like just because of the way that the aerial roots look it, it gives the impression that it that the base is just flaring out kind of like a maple would do but um but that's not you know it's not doing that it's just aerial roots and the way i positioned it why is it in this ugly plastic training pot you might ask um i had it in an actual bonsai pot i think last year something or other happened it got knocked over fell out my girlfriend came and said oh your chaflair is out it's on the ground and i went oh no and i ran out put it in this with some sphagnum moss and some really good soil and i just wanted it to <laughs> survive and recover so that's why it's in there and it's been in there ever since probably do to be repotted here soon so put that on the short list of trees to think about repotting soon there it is so introducing for the first time my willow leaf ficus i don't know anything about willow leaf ficus I bought, when I first bought this last year, roughly about this time, and eh, maybe it was in the summer, I don't know, it was all leafed out, very full of leaves, had even more branches, it was just like a ball of branches and leaves. Thinned it out, potted it into this, I, I love the base of this thing, but anyway, since then, it it's just, it's like it's barely hanging on, it dropped a lot of leaves, I've done all kinds of things, I've put it under grow lights, took it out from under grow lights. At one point, only one time ever, I did see it start to sprout new growth. And I thought, oh, there it is, there it is. It's, it's happening, it's recovering. I'm just gonna not mess with it. And so I didn't mess with it. And it sprouted out some new leaves and then it just stopped and a lot of them fell off again. And I'm going, ah, I don't know. So if you've got any good info on willow leaf ficus, would love to hear it because I can't figure these things out. It's like they don't, they're not. Let's see if I can get to focus here. Sorry. Focusing is always my arch nemesis. Anyway, I just can't get this thing to really thrive. I mean, it's doing okay, so we'll let it keep going. Here's another dwarf Korean lilac, just a little one, just another cutting. Just put it in there because, you know, just cuss. <laughs> Here's just a, another uh, ficus benjamina. This was my work or office bonsai. I have since switched jobs and switched industries, so I'm not really in an office all that much anymore. So I brought it home and here it is. It's Talk about structural flaws. Let me talk to you about some structural flaws. It's got a few. But do we care? Not right now. Right now, we're just gonna let it do what it's doing and we'll worry about that stuff later. So this guy, my uh, Ficus Benjamina Fusion Project. As you can see here, I did, I'm gonna call it re-wrap it. I did re-wrap it recently, um, which I think I showed you some footage on earlier. And we'll see, not much really to say there. I'm just kind of still letting it do its thing. It's, it's a mess, not worrying too much about that. But um, so that's that. Um, I'll give you a quick look. I've, I've got some other, you know, a few other trees here and there. Schifleras and Ficus Benjamina and Tiger Bark and a money tree. And nothing too exciting there. These are all cuttings. I've got armor maple cuttings. Um, I've got a lot of these Philadelphus cuttings. Those are the oak cuttings that I took when I did the oak tree recently. Some dwarf Korean lilac cuttings. Mostly armor maple and a couple of willows. And those are the bigger, the larger lilac uh, cuttings that I did. Last but not least, this is a dwarf Alberta spruce. This was my Christmas tree. Have done nothing with it yet, but just today I kind of shook it while I was cleaning stuff up and ow, ow, 
Boy, it took no time to attack me. And parts of it died, as you can see here. There's another. So parts of it died and parts of it didn't. I shook it in different areas and some were still firm and not firm, but flexible and green and alive. Other parts just died off. So I'm going to try and work with that, but that's it. Anyways, just wanted to give you another look here at the at the new bonsai benches and the other half of my spring collection update. And I decided kind of last minute to do one more walkthrough of my outdoor trees. I did, this was basically the part one of the spring update that I did a week or two ago. But as I looked at it, I realized they weren't leafed out when I did that update. So now that they're all starting to bud out and leaf out a little bit, I thought, eh, let's just do a real quick five minute walkthrough. We won't stop and linger on any of them, but we'll just take a second look at them. Now that they're all starting to leaf out, wake up and come alive. There's that Siberian elm. I had that one inside, but I moved it out here. A bunch more cuttings and a blueberry tree bush, I should say. A couple of oaks, a couple of, that's a green ash coming back to life. It's a silver maple, a different silver maple, because of course, I don't have enough silver maples. Catonister. Here is a red maple. You can see the wiring scars. I wired it up last year for about two weeks and it already got scars. It's a river birch. Oak leaf sumac. Very pretty, but very stinky when you make cuss on it. They smell real bad. It's another silver maple that can't quite figure out what I'm doing with it yet. But it's budding out. That is a western sand cherry. I did some drastic cuts on this. I did some drastic cuts on a lot of these just to get them back being structurally correct. I can never remember the honey locust. I can never remember the name of that. There's another uh, catonister there. That's my biggest Siberian elm. Going with kind of a windswept look to it. It's doing this like walking like an Egyptian type of thing. I like it. My Siberian elm forest. I've been sticking cuttings back into the forest. I'll trim these trees up. And I'll just take the cuttings from that and stick it right back in the same forest. Whether or not that's going to work remains to be seen, but that's why there's some bark on there. I found that bark is really good for stuff like that because it doesn't hold moisture in, but it holds humidity in, if that makes sense. It's just a little, um, I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, moving on. <laughs> Suckle. Look at the juniper here, post trim. Going with that cascading look. Silver maple, that one did its loop de loop pretty good. There's the Virginia creeper, starting to bud out. An armor maple cutting. There's the oak bonsai, I did a video on that about a month ago. It's starting to bud out. I was a little afraid that I did it too early, but I didn't. It survived. So far, at least. My smaller oak leaf sumac. Did a video on that a month or two ago. It's pretty ugly. There's a silver maple. I like the way this one's going. See how different they can all turn out? They're all about the same age. That is the lilac I did a video on also a couple months ago. There's my Shantung maple. My favorite tree of all the trees. They're definitely in ugly condition right now. <laughs> Hoping it comes back. Did a video on this one three, four, five months ago. It's a willow cutting. It survived. The winter. 
There's an Amor Maple that I made a video on and just haven't posted yet. There's another Amor Maple. There's my other Virginia Creeper that I was mentioning earlier. This is my Katsura Japanese Maple. Starting to bud out, just barely. someday. This is my wisteria. I've got it in this huge pot. This is my crab apple. bought this at Costco last year. I was so excited about it. I cut a third or so off the top. And there's the willow. So there it is. Thanks for watching everybody.